please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. Dave Williams, editor here with today's video. Merry Christmas. It's Christmas Day. Now, normally our Two Clicks Out videos are premium content, but it's Christmas, so you have to give a gift. Christmas is pretty popular in my neighborhood. I mean, I don't know, I'm not all that religious. I don't believe in Santa or anything, but an excuse to give a gift is always a good thing. Now, in this video, we've got a couple of street bikes and a couple of track bikes, so you can get some kind of idea of how those things are tuned. My name is Dave Moss. I tune approximately 3,500 bikes per year. This is Two Clicks Out. Now steal now the steal microphone, the microphone. Mask. What year? 18. How many miles? 2,000. 2,000, okay. And it's all stock? As far as I know, I just got it. You just got it? Okay. Well, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, all right. I've been working, so I, I put about 500 miles on. Got it. It feels great. It's a little bouncy. Yeah. <laughs> I had one of these in New Zealand. And one of the most painful rides of my life was 14 hours on this with the stock seat. Yeah. Yeah, luckily all the stuff has already changed. For yes, which is wonderful. Yeah. And you, the only thing is the tank is way too small. Yeah, it's a thirsty. All right, how do you use the bike? Canyons. Canyons only? Mostly, yeah. Okay. I don't commute on it, it's just weekend only bike. All right, take a seat. Okay, so you're nicely balanced. And you can feel the pogo in it. Yeah. Okay. How many do we have to line up for? So 35 mil in the front. Ooh, there's your pogo. All right, so we know what that is. All right, go ahead, dismount, I'm clear. 20. So the sack's correct. You're 30 in the back and 35 in the front, so it's just nudged ever so much forward. You've got a little bit, just enough static in the back. So the issue's all hydraulic. As it unloads, there's no control. Front and rear. So you're having a lot too much hand duress through corners. And straight line is just, Miserable. Well, let's get to work. Let's get this problem fixed. Okay. One, two, three, four clicks in. Okay. Oh, you guys just Not enough. Okay, that's six in. Much better. So now it doesn't, oh, where do you go? Now it doesn't jump up, so let's see where compression is. So at 14 out. So your compression was 14 out, so as you hit a bump, it just blows through the stroke. So I'm gonna change it to eight. If you allow it stroke, you therefore get even more velocity. So if we set it so you're riding in the middle two thirds, a lot more comfortable, a lot more comfortable. So now, if you watch your exhaust, the goodbye ejection. So we're done with that. So now if we check the front, we could see it pogo. Nowhere near as bad as the back though, right? So we need a slight adjustment on the front. It's at five out, so we'll go to four. perfectly even. So the other part is because the back was pinging constantly, yeah. it's about how much travel did you use and you're down to here. So most of it. Almost all of it because the back was crushing the front. So at this point, 
I want to see where compression is and if it's somewhere between 8 to 10 I'm going to leave it there but at this point now we can back off some preload so the forks instead of being constantly under duress can move and so when you hit that first expansion joint it'll be a lot more comfortable so let's see where we are on compression Sixteen. So we're way out. So let's reset it to ten. Same on this one. Now when you come back from the test ride, I'm going to open only compression and make it softer again to see how the bike feels in terms of if it's too stiff then your fingers are going to do this right your fingers will flutter because the front end's doing this not this so let's test this setting when you come back it's a four second adjustment go around spin back i'll walk straight over to you remove four clicks of compression all the way around and send you back out on the same route at the same speed okay all right so grab your gear Four out, as mentioned earlier, on compression. All right, apples to apples. See what if you prefer this over the previous setting. So four out on compression all the way around. So you can feel the improvement. The question is, is this a step in the wrong direction that is too soft? That works. So you're at 40 mil in the front. <laughs> 75, okay, off you get, I'm clear. So 25 in the rear, plus static. So you're 40 and 35, which is nice and plush and comfortable. Perfect for commuting, running around, having fun, but not trying to strafe corners. Okay. So in terms of use, even though you don't get to ride a lot, do you get up on get up in the Sierras and ride around? I do a little bit. Uh, to me, the front end feels very rigid. Yep. So in a corner, I can feel like the asset wants to come around. And you're 100% correct. Because? The oil in the forks is extremely thick. Oh. The oil in the shock is very thin, and the damping on the shock is very open. Okay. So, jumps around a lot. Yeah. Doesn't move a lot. There's your story. Okay. So this needs to be brought into line. This needs to be softened up, is realistically where we go. And sometimes the forks need to come through an additional four millimeters because the way the bike is ridden isn't hard enough to get it through the stroke, even with no preload and no compression. To transfer some weight to the front. So end. when you decel, you don't bounce off the front. Okay. And that's why you're feeling the bum come around because it comes to the front and the front doesn't give. So then the rear goes. Yeah. Okay. And that's why you're getting the effect you're getting. So let's start with the back of the bike, because that's the most important. So that's your compression adjuster. So the bigger the number, the softer it is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, fifteen. So if you're going through and blowing through a lot of travel then we need that to stop. So then we'll go to set it to 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then on the bottom down here is your rebound adjuster. Okay. Now we know that's pinging you out of the seat, irrespective of the fact that the front's too stiff. So just pushing on it and then looking at your tire, see how lumpy it is on the very outside here? Yeah. That's the tire skipping along on the road when you're on the side. 
So what you're saying about the tire coming around on you, yeah. there it is, it's all right there. Okay. So a tire can tell a story, you just have to know how to read it. It's because we don't read tea leaves anymore. Right. All those generations have gone. The tire is what we look at now for information. And in that case, we need to slow the rebound down. So if we slow it down, we to go clockwise to reduce flow. Okay. So we'll go three clicks clockwise. One, two, three. Now, when I push on the seat, we should see it rise a lot slower instead of ping, 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 right? So all we're doing, just like the kitchen tap, we're setting the velocity of fluid for the glass. We're setting the velocity of fluid to keep our ass on the seat okay. instead of bouncing a lot. Right. Around. And that creates that pivot that we just erased. So the second piece of erasing is to soften the forks up. And in this case, given your weight and that measurement, even though it says 40, which is book smart, we got to look and see how much travel you use, and it's not a whole lot because you're sitting here. So it just does this. So, preload's on the bottom. So come around. Now it's too clean, we can't see. So, all the preload's out already, which is interesting. And that's the way a demo bag should be set up. Yep, this side is the same. So if they've done their homework on this, the COM adjuster should be all the way off and a quarter turn back. So, COM is the outside adjuster. So, ah. So that's why it's still stiff. They took all the spring out of it, so we'll go half a turn in, and we'll come back over here and do exactly the same. So that now will allow the fork to move. Oh, wow. yeah. We open the floodgates so it can move. So the it's got to go down, up, and stop now. But it doesn't, right? right? It just tips over. So where we are on tension, we want a half a turn more clockwise on both. So there's a half a turn. And that's the rebound. Rebound, 10 is tension, rubber band. You snap a rubber band back like a wrist rocket. Uh -huh. So it's more like a trampoline. So tension is the old word from the 50s. Okay. Sometimes you'll see REB, so it's, re it's been updated to rebound. So now, it just stops. So at this point, you're 100% balanced. Okay, test ride. It feels much better, it's much more stable. Uh, as much as I took it out and rode it, didn't get too crazy on it, but at the extreme, it, for my extreme, it felt like there was a little bit of that. Acid. Still? Still wanted to come out of it. Okay, now when that happened, were you just cracking the throttle on? Were you off the throttle or were you into it? So take a second think, and think that through. I don't think it was on it because when I on it, when I got on it, it felt like it hooked up and it's, the bike was right. straight now and it, that went away. Because I don't so want to project the outcome. Off, uh, coming off the throttle. Yeah. So then the back's doing this, and that's the appreciation then of when the oil is hot, that's what happens. Oh, I see. Dink, dink. Yeah. But you've got to get the oil hot enough for it to do that. And if you don't, it won't. So as we're going into the fall, it may never do it again because the shock will never reach the right. temperatures it's getting to here it's at 100, day, right, 100 degrees. Highway, so you took it on the highway and everything, and it was a marked difference, definitely. It felt. Okay. Again, the whole thing feels more stable. All right, so the question is now, do you use tools? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put one click of rebound in on the rear, okay. and you're gonna go and test it on the roads you know at the pace you ride. Okay. Take a three millimeter Allen with you and test one more click in when it's smoking hot. Okay. Because the oil's not gonna get any thinner at that point. Right. So I'll put one in now, 
which will cure your hop at this pace with what you're doing with this temperature. So the next time you go out, three mil in the pocket, go ride, get it hot, pink, I know what that is. Now if you ride for two hours, it may do it after an hour. Mm -hmm. When it's this hot, it may do it after 30 minutes. Right. So put it, so you're gonna put- One more in. Click in clockwise. And you're gonna see if you need another on a normal ride of a normal duration at normal pace on the rise you know. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Definitely. Thanks for your Just trust. A little ride it feels much better. Yeah. Uh, yeah, coming down. Like right, like I was, I was nice on the throttle, but when it caught grip, it just went like this. Oh, you got to wiggle out of it. Yeah, tire, tire's hot. I should have got grip quicker than that. So, as you come over nine, right, you're coming onto this side of the tire. Okay. See how rough that is? I just got to get it off. Well, no, that's from riding. Your tire pressure's way too high. So your contact patch on your gauge. Your gauge says that, right? Right. Then we need to check tire temperature. So at this point, we've got to, that's, the tire shows there's a question there. The next piece is, is the rebound too fast or too slow? Was that coming up at all? No. So what's that doing to the back of the bike? keeping it fucking pretty far down. <laughs> and then, right, the other part is you get in the compression at nine and you get down the bottom, what does it do to the shock? Whack. Yep. Now the tire's doing this because the shock's bottomed out and well, it can't move anymore. So the tire, if you're even slightly off 12 o'clock, the whole bike's gonna do that. So, we gotta open your rebound up. DDC. Okay, let's see where you're set. Yeah, that's way too much. So rear, let's see, rear rebound is plus four. We're gonna change that to one. Oh wow, big difference. Yeah. Well, we're gonna test it, right? It's only three on the scale of 15. So it's not huge, but now it moves. Yep. It's got a hitch in it, so I'm gonna try zero. When you say a hitch, you're getting a little little uh, uh, stop. Watch. Of third way up. I thought I saw it. Yeah. So let's try zero. There we go. Now it's nice and smooth. So that'll solve that issue. The other part is if rebound's too slow, it's doing that to the tire. So let's see what the wear is after the next series of laps to see if that tire wear improves. With the shock locked, it's just hammering the tire. So there's no relationship between both. It's just complete overplay. I only went for literally one side lap. Last time I was on, it was a truck wall. So we'll see what it does. Well, that's how badly it tortured the tire in one lap. So I'm grateful you did one lap. <laughs> Asterisk tire wear has gone away though. So in here is still really rough. It's uh, uh, 85% better. Okay. I can get to about 80% throttle. Okay. But I can feel it sit now, so down right. five as well. Let's make sure the front end isn't bouncing. When I rip the electronic expansion suspension out, then we'll really set it up right. Okay, sir. Is this um? Just because there's lots of elevation here, why it needs to go the other way? Yeah, yeah. Okay, makes a lot of sense. What did you do to it, Dave? So, uh, compressions were, compression and damping were both at five on each end. Positive, so I've gone down to three positive. 
so a little bit softer. If it's too stiff, you coil bind, and then the tire does the same thing. So as you go down five, and five is slower speed, but still load, especially at the bottom where it does that, right? So you should find when you get to the bottom of five, it actually steers more precisely versus sitting, and then you've got to pull it round. So it should be better all the way around. Right, nothing to the front yet, right? Not yet. Right. Not yet. Thank you. So I was just wondering if you might check out the suspension and the sure. of the bike and make sure it's okay. Okay, how long have you had it? Uh, I've had it since last November. Put okay. 8,000 miles on it. This is my fourth track date. Okay. Yeah. And everything's in stock? Everything is stock. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I like the way it's going. I put your tie on it and it went down farther than I expected, frankly. I oh, that's a blow. It. Yeah. What a shame. Yeah. You, you exceeded your expectations. I did. All right, so put your helmet and gloves in the chair for me. All right, take a seat. Do you mind if I just watch? And... I need you on the bike first. Oh. I'm going to measure it with you on it. All right. And then that'll tell me where we're at okay. and whether it's too stiff or too soft. All right. Okay, so. You've only got 30 mil in the front. Uh -huh. But your braking skill and corner entry speed is crushing it. Okay. So that's got to be something with the settings here okay. that is allowing it to go through too much of the travel. Yeah. Or the back of the bike is rigid, okay. crushing the forks when you go into the corner. So, feel that bounce? Yeah. That's really impacting your forks. Okay, okay off you get, I'm clear. 610 to 635. So you're at 25 mil in the back and 30 in the front. What, what, what's that mean? You're supposed to be 30 to 40 in the rear. Oh, okay. So you're extremely stiff, so you're riding that. Okay. okay. So we need to stiffen the front, soften the back, bring okay. it to level, yeah. and then get rid of this bounce. Because right. as soon as you decelerate, yeah. it's an eight second ride. You've got a piece of rope here and yeah. you're holding on. Okay, so we're going to loosen this top ring, which is the locking ring, yes. so that I can turn the lower ring, which is the adjusting ring. All right. And we need to turn it three full turns. Wow. So all I do is count the number of castle nuts. Yeah. So the ring is coming upward, right? Ah, our, our travel uh -huh. is small because the spring tension is stiff. Yeah. So if we make the spring longer, okay. we make it softer. Okay. The other part is we need to be able to pick the back of the bike up. And with the stock setting, you cannot. So every time you hit a bump, it does that, which impacts the forks. Okay. joints on freeways or helicopter? Used to be. Okay, very good. So, compression's now at nine out. All right. so the Rebound is at five. All right, so you have to adjust the spring. Yeah, so now it doesn't jump. All right. So you'll be much more comfortable there. And then this nut is for all those expansion joints. Okay. And what it does is control velocity. So when you hit something hard or sharp, yeah. it's there to control it, and okay. it's wide open right now. So okay. one, two. So as it hits, it'll control the velocity and right. not try and shorten your spine. Okay. So we've got nine and a half to maximum. All right. So we're going to six. All right. Which will give you a lot more braking stability. All right. Yep. And then, rebounds very good. So now your whole bike is even. Yeah. And then we'll see where compression is. 
14. One of them. So the rebound is good stock. In this instance, how many miles are on it? 8,000. So old thick oil? It's working oh, fine. How much should I change the oil? We'll talk about that when you come back. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Let me trim that up. Dave Moss can tune your suspension no matter where you are on the planet via his remote tuning service. Contact Dave on Facebook or by email, dave at davemosstuning.com.